A while ago, I highlighted some of the best SIM-free and unlocked bargains to be had out there in smartphone land, recognising that few people have the budget to spend £500 or more on what's perceived by their partners as just a phone. Well, it's bargain time again, and what can I recommend? At the low end, the price of the HP iPack 514 voice messenger can't be beaten at just £100 plus sales tax, yet running Windows Mobile 6 and having onboard Wi-Fi. The low price seems to be because the camera is a lowly 1.3 megapixel unit and because the display is the old style 176 by 220 pixel size, but I don't care. That's still a lot of smartphone in a very phone-sized form factor for an incredibly low price. Going slightly more upmarket, Nokia's budget S60 smartphone, the 6120 Classic, takes some beating at £140 plus sales tax. With many of the software features from the flagship N95, though without the GPS and 5 megapixel camera, the 6120 is well built and an amazing bargain. And this isn't even an offer price, this is what it normally retails at. Amazing. Staying with the N95, second-hand models in good condition on eBay are now going for £170 on average. Given that people are possibly selling them because of the RAM shortage and errors, slow GPS operation and poor battery life, and that you know that there's been a huge recent firmware update that solves these problems for free, there's never been a better time to pick up an N95, upgrade it yourself and be the proud owner of a flagship smartphone with change from £200 for an evening out somewhere with your partner. Windows Mobile fans should note the original HTC Titan is now down to around £100 on eBay. Apart from the lack of 3G, this is still an amazingly capable device, though you do have to search for all the branded variants. The Titan was rebadged by just about every network under different names, so a little research here will almost certainly net you a real bargain. And I can't resist mentioning that the Nokia E61, my original bargain from last time, is now down to £50 or so on eBay, and there have also been firmware updates for this that can bring it more up to date. Although I've given prices in pounds sterling, I'm sure you can research these models from your own national stockists at similar bargain SIM-free prices. One phenomenon which I keep on seeing in the smartphone world is the appearance of models which improve on their predecessor in some ways, but fail to do so in others. I give you the Nokia N93i and Nokia N95 8GB, for example, each two steps forward and one step back. And now there's the 3G but Wi-Fi-less HTC Touch Dual. I really hope they keep this original non-3G but Wi-Fi enabled touch available as well, for there will be some people for whom it's perhaps more suitable. But that's not to knock what HTC have done right in the Touch Dual. Firstly, they've taken the Touch Flow interface and extended it. It's still no Apple iPhone, but at least you can pretend with finger flipping, photo browsing and zooming, in addition to the original Touch interface based around a task cube. Once you go beyond the basics, though, you're still in raw Windows Mobile 6 professional territory. It's the hardware which is most different between the two, though. Aside from the 3G Wi-Fi issue, the original touch is shorter, thinner and lighter. The potential decrease in reliability through having a slide mechanism and keypad might also be an issue for some. I know it is for me. And interestingly, HTC haven't improved the camera with 2 megapixels looking very dated as we head into 2008. But one thing that fascinated me was HTC's announcement of an intelligent, finger-operated on-screen keyboard at the Dual's launch. Alas, HTC haven't officially delivered this yet, running over a month late as I speak, but thanks to the wonderful XDA developers site, their utility is available unofficially, and I was keen to compare it to some of the newer third-party keyboard utilities. Which one's best? TouchPal is one of those off-the-wall utilities that 10% of the population will utterly love. The old fiddly system for stylus PDA springs to mind. But 90% will utterly hate, and I'm afraid I'm in the latter category. I was tearing my hair out trying to retrain my brain to press and swipe for every single character needed. Surely there's got to be a better way. The happy tapping keyboard mimics the iPhone without, alas, the iPhone's error correction algorithms. Tapping on individual virtual keys with a fingertip results in far too many errors and I was perplexed by the way any punctuation got inserted on top of the preceding word. Another one in the dustbin for me. Next up is the colourful zoom board, although the virtual keys here were even smaller and the only positive thing I can say is that it's easier to use with a stylus than the default Windows Mobile keyboard. It's certainly not finger friendly. Which leaves me with the unofficial official utility, if you see what I mean, HTC's own touch keypad and touch keyboard. Unlike the other solutions here, these two actually work as intended, with large, finger-friendly keys arranged into either a phone-like keypad arrangement or Sony Ericsson P1i-like QWERTY layout with two letters per key. 
In either mode, there's full predictive text support. I was happiest in QWERTY mode, finding that word prediction worked 100% reliably as opposed to only 95% with keypad layouts on any device, with three letters per key, not always giving a single unique match for any words attempted as opposed to two letters a key giving exact matches every time. My verdict by a landslide then is the official HTC solution. If you're a touch user then run, don't walk to upgrade your device with this utility. If HTC are watching this, please get this up officially on your site. Have you forgotten you promised it? So here I am in a rainy car park, in a rainy car, in dimming light, miles from nowhere, literally, <laughs> uh, trying to get my laptop online with my smartphone, totally wirelessly, broadband internet. That's the theory. I'm about to give it a go and see if it works. So here's my laptop and here's my smartphone, in this case my trusty Nokia N95. Okay, let's give it a go. Within the PC suite window, you'll see there's an icon for connect to the internet. Let's double click on that and see what happens. Up pops one touch access. And there's an auto connection within 10 seconds for the connected Bluetooth modem, which is uh, how the N95 appears uh, as standard. So there's nothing to do, just wait. Um, opening port, connecting device, verifying username and password. This is all set for me. There's nothing I need to do. Connected. And that should be it. And if I look at the N95 screen, I can see that there's a standard GPRS connection icon, no 3G or 3.5G, uh, but I really am miles from anywhere. I'm out in the countryside, so uh, that's to be expected. Okay, so we are wirelessly connected to the internet, albeit slightly slowly. And if I switch back to my browser on my laptop and then perhaps bring up uh, the Google News homepage, let's just prove that it works. Now this is, I could say, over GPRS, so it's not terribly fast. But we've done it. Um, it's fairly cheap, it's very accessible, and it works. And it will work for more or less any smartphone and more or less any laptop. And just we can scroll down the page to prove that we're live. These are the current news stories. So there we are, connected first time under very suboptimal conditions. Um, yet another use for your smartphone? Give it a try. If it's December 2007, it must be Engage, the next generation. Except that Nokia hasn't thrown the switch on the server yet, so we're all left on tenterhooks. Still, by the time you see Smartphone Show 50 in January, Engage will have launched, and you'll be able to download and play titles like Star Wars Force Unleashed, whose trailer I'm playing through here. I'll also be looking out for games like Pro Series Golf 1 and Mile High Pinball, among others shown here. The S60 games market has been somewhat stunted for a long time, and the final launch of N-Gage is significantly overdue. And so with some very unseasonal winter sunshine here in the UK, this will be the last smartphone show of 2007. Over half a million of you have watched this year. I'll see you next year. In the meantime, have a very happy and safe holiday season. Goodbye.